A we are now live. Good morning, beautiful people. What did do? I am Christian, CJ the Genesis, whatever. All that. And this is another edition of Fable Friday. Hey, Jess, what it do? So, Fable Fridays, just to go over really fast for everyone. MJ, what it do? This is, hang on, let me get this for the screenshot. Let me get this for the screenshot. Man, I'm mad this thing is in reverse, but whatever, we're going to do this. So, Fable Fridays, it is a series where we're breaking down Aesop's Fables, or Aesop's Fables, as they pronounce it. And we take it modern. We make it modern. We make it, you know, we go through it. We break it down. We get the lessons. We get the gems. We get all of that. And, yeah, so this past week was inauguration week i hope everyone stays safe even though it was a pretty docile uh event um hope everyone got what they wanted i guess uh yeah none of the fables today have anything to do with that so i'm not even going to get into that because i felt like the last couple times was a little a little political and i'm not trying to really go there so this week I have a few stories that are, you know, once again about wisdom, awareness. It's about knowing yourself, being yourself, which is what I'm all about. So this is perfect. <laughs> this is perfect. So right now we will start with, let's see, we're going to start with a story called the stag with one eye. The stag with one eye. This one is interesting. And maybe you can get something from it. Okay. So, the stag with one eye. Let's go into it. A stag, blind of one eye, was grazing close to the seashore and kept his sound eye towards the land. He kept his sound eye turned towards the land so as to be able to perceive the approach of the hounds, while the blind eye he turned towards the sea, never suspecting that any danger would threaten him from that quarter. As it fell out, however, some sailors coasting along the shore spied him and shot an arrow at him, by which he was mortally wounded. As he lay dying, he said to himself, Wretch that I am, I bethought me of the dangers of the land, whence none assailed me. But I fear no peril from the sea, yet thence has come my ruin. With the moral of the story being, misfortune often assails us from an unexpected quarter. Now, let's break this down. Let's break this down. So the stag has, I mean, this, this is pretty simple, right? Aside from like the, uh, what it do, Maps? How you feeling, brother? Like, uh, with this story, of course, aside from like, you know, the, the wretched and the wince, <laughs> thence, you know, all the, the old school kind of uh, uh, syntax, I guess. Um, it's really about a stag that had one eye. He was drinking water and, you know, he's trying to make sure that, um, what it do, Mike, what it do? He's trying to make sure that he can, you know, he's keeping his good eye to the land because he's like, hey, I need to make sure that, you know, none of these hounds, none of these wolves, none of these hunters come and get me. So he's keeping his eye like this while his blind eye is towards the sea. So while his blind eye is towards the sea and he's just on point, my man is on point. He on the swivel, whatever you want to call it. Meanwhile, on this side, the sailors see him snipe his ass down and he's on the ground crying. Sway, what it do? Vontae, what it do? So... This stag, you know, just get back into it. The stag with one eye, he's keeping his good eye towards the shore because he thinks that um, wolves and other things might come and get him. But on his blind side, on his blind side, which is towards the sea, the sailors and hunters saw him, got him out of there. He was on the ground crying, talking about, damn, 
wretch, wince, hence. <laughs> okay, it's just funny language, but uh, wretch that I am, I bethought me of the dangers of the land, whence none assailed me, but I feared no peril from the sea. Uh, yet, <laughs> yo, sway, shut up. <laughs> yet, thence has come my ruin. Um, I'll give you your money on Saturday. But, uh, so, of course, the moral being misfortune often assails us from an unexpected quarter. So what does that mean? It means watch everything. And this is, this has kind of been a theme this week in general, you know, uh, a lot of, a lot of, a lot of people will show fear towards the thing that, towards the thing that they know is going to, they know it's going to burn them or they think they know it's going to burn them. But not to the side over here. It's like when they say, oh, like, um, like when, when people get kidnapped or something, it's usually by someone they know. Or same with even, like, unfortunately, murders. A lot of it comes from people you do know as opposed to folks that you don't know. Like, I'm more worried, like, you know, you got to be more worried about folks that know you clocking your moves as opposed to people who don't know who the hell you are at all. Because people don't know who the hell you are at all, don't know you at all, while it's the folks that do have a little bit more of a drop on you. Um, and, I mean, there's many different ways that that can go. There's many different ways. Uh, Malik, what it do? Uh, I'm not, I'm not going to call you by your new nickname today. I'm going to let you have it. It's a new day. It's Friday. <laughs> but um, I think this story I think this story really just illustrates the, the importance of you know, if you're going to be on your swivel, if you're going to be aware, you need to be all the way aware. You need to be all the way aware, 360 aware, um, not even necessarily in a perspective of murder or or uh, harm or anything. Um, you know, it's, it's more so it's more so just just be aware, be careful. Um, I feel like I have more to say about it, but I kind of don't. Um, really, just 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 watch yourself. I, I, I think I, I'm not gonna get political. No, don't get political. Don't get political. Don't get political. Um, really, once again, ultimately, it comes down to being aware from all angles. Don't think that just because you're comfortable at this place or you're comfortable with this side. You, you, that nothing, nothing is going to come to you, you know? Um, and I would even go make it a little bit more esoteric and say, you know, some, sometimes people look, you know, sometimes paranoid people, they look, they look everywhere. It's like, oh man, the world's out to get me. The world's out to get me. The world's out to get me. But really you're the only one that's sabotaging your progress or your, uh, uh, your life. And, I think that that's interesting too, because you have your blind eye on yourself and you're keeping your good eye towards the world, hoping that, not even hoping that per se, you're more so like kind of expecting that someone out there or something out there is going to do you wrong. Something out there is going to do you dirty. Something out there is going to keep you from where you want to be. Ultimately, it could be you. So 360 is all around 360. I might even say 540, 720. If we're going to go Tony Hawk skate park, Tony Hawk underground, um, you know, look all around, look up, look down, look left, look right, look within, look without, without, look outside, I guess, look inside, look outside. Um, I really, I really think that that just illustrates that a lot of the danger and things that we think we're not going to expect is coming from the place where we really don't expect it. Um, and sometimes the, the dangers that we are afraid of aren't that dangerous at all and aren't really going to come and get us. It's not, you know, it's not about, and, and I, I kind of bring it even to a music sense or a business sense or what have you. It's like, you don't have to worry about, you know, the, the world or the business world screwing you over. You have to worry about maybe your associates screwing you over. Maybe, maybe you're the one screwing people over. Maybe, but keep your good eye, both eyes, all eyes on everything and maybe you won't be so surprised and at the very least maybe you can be even be prepared because nobody wants to get shot from the seaside so that's it on that um i think that is pretty self-explanatory does anyone have any questions comments concerns anything um does anyone have any uh 
riveting not i don't want to say riveting but yeah riveting because it's funny riveting opinions or uh stories that they want to share regarding that or is everyone chilling should i just go to the next one also while i wait uh, malik says speaking of drop i want to go ahead and plug this in um shout out to everyone that checked out the hideaway video um if you don't know what that is go to my page and look at my last post me, Naughty J, and Ja Trigg made a cool song. It's talking about, uh, <laughs> chill out, <laughs> chill out, <today. laughs> We're just talking about, you know, just being introverts and staying in the house, especially during times of anarchy and, um, uncertainty. Mm -hmm. Uh, so go check that out. Go share that. The algorithm's doing, doing this dirty right now, but I don't really care. Mm -hmm. Um, okay. All right. Thank you, Tex, for coming in now um so yeah go check that out it's a dope song dope video a lot of bs happened and also check out naughty j's new lyrics to float which explains what happened during that video shoot and after that video shoot and why uh niggas ain't shit okay so let's go to the next let's go to the next one i have a couple that i i had on um i had on reserve so let, let, let's see okay you know what? This is a one-two combo. One is really short. One is medium long. And I think the last one is pretty short as well. So we're going to do four today. If if y'all if y'all are uh, interested. Um, wait. I did not put that. Okay, maybe not. Because I think I, I wrote something down wrong. Hold up. Hang on really quick. Hang on really quick. Um, no, okay, whatever. I'm not going to get into that right now. There was a, there was a, there was a good one that I had and now I really want to read that one. You know how they say, you know, if you want to know what you want, if you have two choices and you want to know what you want, flip a coin, right? Because usually when you flip a coin while the coin is in the air, you know what you want it to land on, right? I remember back in like Burger King days, it's like, do I want chicken nuggets or do I want a Whopper? I'm going to flip a coin. As soon as that coin goes up in the air, my brain's like, the Whopper. But and you know, it might land on tails, which means chicken nuggets, and then I'm going to get a Whopper anyway, because that's what I want. But anyway, at that, that's how I feel about that story right now. I'll find it. I'll find it uh, shortly, but I don't want to waste too much time. So let's get into this next story. It's called The Farmer and the Viper. Very short, very to the point. I think this is pretty self-explanatory. One winter, a farmer found a viper frozen and numb with cold, and out of pity, picked it up and placed it in his bosom. The viper was no sooner revived by the warmth than it turned upon its benefactor and inflicted a fatal bite upon him. And as the poor man lay dying, he cried, I have only got what I deserved for taking compassion on so villainous a creature. Moral, kindness is thrown away upon the evil. So this is very, very, very self-explanatory. Um, you know, there is a viper, a snake, what have you. It's frozen. The farmer's on his compassionate tip. Oh man, let me help out the viper. I'm gonna help out the viper because I'm a good person and whatever, you know lays it out for him keeps him warm and the viper thawed out and bit that motherfucker <laughs> and he died <laughs> he died you know this story is this story is cold because it's like dang it's one thing if he found like you know like a garter snake or one of those snakes that just don't kill you but instead no my man's found a viper a venomous snake and not only it is okay there, there, there's a few things here like now i relate to the farmer a bit i relate to the farmer a bit because i'm a very compassionate person as well i'm a person you know that 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 wants to help people even if i know that that help is either going to be unappreciated or if the person that is receiving the help might you know could possibly do me wrong but it's more so like 
benefit of the doubt. You know, I've been in situations where literally me being compassionate for people, uh, for people who did not have my best interest has literally like burnt me. Like not literally like, like, uh, uh, like the clap or literally like a fire It's more so like I literally ended up in a worse situation than I was in before all because I wanted to be compassionate, all because I wanted to, you know, empathize. And there's nothing wrong with that. But one big thing that I've noticed in not only this story, but also a lot of the Esau's fables is that is the importance of discernment. It's about discernment. You know, sometimes it, it, it's it's okay to be compassionate. It's okay to be empathetic. It's okay, you know, to do all that, you know, even if you want to help a stranger. But sometimes, like, you don't know if this is a viper. I, I think I look at this story and I think, okay, when the farmer picked the snake up, did he examine the bottom of it? You know how they say, you know, they had a certain scales, they have certain teeth, they have certain, you know, anything that will kind of indicate that this is a poisonous snake, right? Um, did he examine it to realize that this is a poisonous snake, right? Did he, did he examine it? Did he really understand this at all? Or was he just being, was he just out here for everybody and say, look, I'm going to sit here and I'm going to just help everybody. I'm going to, you know, do this and not realize, sit and examine that, Hey, this thing is poisonous. Like, you know, and, and there is another adage about a poisonous snake and someone helping it out. And, uh, I'll get into it really quick. I'll try, I'll try to make it. I'll try to make it brief. But there's a story. I think it's an Aesop fable, but I'll get into it anyway. Right now, it's a story about a snake. It's a snake that was uh, pretty much someone was trying to help a snake. It was two people trying to help a snake. One person was like, "Hey, don't help that snake at all." The other person was like, "Nah, fuck it. I'm gonna try to help." And they wanted to try to grab the snake. The snake bit him. Okay. Dude, other dudes, I told you not to help that snake. He said, hang on, let me try again. I want to try again. Snake bit him even harder the second time. And dude, and the second dude is like, bro, I told you, stop messing with that snake. And the first guy's like, okay, no, I want to help the snake. So then he grabs a stick to pick the snake up and get it to where it's going, like throw it to where it's going. Because I think it was trapped somewhere. It was like trapped in like a pit or something like that. So he took the stick to get the snake and then throw the snake back in in the grass in the forest where it belonged. And you know the moral of that story was you know don't let uh, uh, don't let someone else's bad character deter you from you having a good character. And I'm like that's a cool story that's cute you know what I'm saying. But some people aren't afforded the opportunity of uh, two more chances to think. You know what I'm saying? Unless, of course, you've been in those types of situations before to where you can look at a situation and say, okay, like maybe I'll help this person out or maybe not. But, you know, nowadays, one, it's not appreciated. Uh, and two, sometimes, especially in a pandemic right now where all these people are going crazy and doing whatever for anything, like that shit might end, you might end up killed or some dumb shit like that. And and like I said, I've been into, I'm not going to get into it. I'm not going to put anybody out there or do anything, whatever, but there, there, there's just been situations I've been in where I've been helpful, I've been kind, I've been, you know, compassionate, I've, I've, I've lent a hand, lent money, did whatever, and come to find out, like, you know, it, it, it's, it's on BS. And now I'm sitting here with less money, with less time, with less energy, um, with less blood, whatever it may be that I, I, I came with, and I'm just like, damn, like, if I just kept walking and, and minding my business. If I just kept walking and did what I had to do, not to say that you can't be compassionate towards people. I'm not saying that. But once again, it's about having discernment. Like if you see this man put picked up a viper, bro, a viper, like viper is not a snake, a viper. Like when I see snake, I think one thing. When I think serpent, I think of another thing. When I see viper, I'm just out. I'm out. I'm not, I'm not, I'm not. I, I I want no smoke with the viper, bro. With the viper, Tito, Chris, what it do? Yeah, I want no smoke with the viper. So I think that ultimately the best way I can put it is, you know, have compassion for people, have empathy for people, you know, help people out if you can. But you know, make sure you're examining to see exactly like one what's going on. Because some people, oh, oh, I need money, I need money. 
and I'm not talking about I'm not talking about homeless people. I ain't talking about all that. But you know the scammers, the other stuff like that. You trying to help somebody out. Next thing you know, you all you in some crazy situation that you know I'm having flashbacks and shit. <laughs> I'm having flashbacks, man. Listen, listen. I've I've gotten into transparently, transparently from from me to you to whoever's watching it. I've been in more bullshit from being nice than I've ever been from being a dick. Like, I know people don't really see me as a dickhead or anything like that. Well, some people see me as a dickhead. But in general, there is way more situations in my life where I've gotten into shit from being too nice and helping somebody out. And I ended up in a bunch of bullshit as opposed to when I've been a dick and just said, fuck it. I'm not, you know. I don't know if me being a dick was discernment. Sometimes it is discernment. And sometimes it's discernment, like, with the oomph, especially if I'm, like, cranky or hungry. It's like, yeah, no, nah, I don't, I'm good, bro. Like, I'm, shh. so I, you know, take with that as you may, um, show compassion, but do your research, have discernment when it comes to dealing with people, um, because you never know who's going to bite you. You never know who's going to bite you. Um, any questions, comments, concerns, anybody have a story they want to share to illustrate this point a little more, feel free, you know, we can jump on. And, you know, and talk about it. Let me know. And while I figure out, I'm going to figure out what's up, where the hell was that story at? Because that was a good ass story. Um, keep them eyes open. Exactly. Because these motherfuckers are crazy out here. And like I said, it's, it, that's been a bit of a... That's been a bit of a uh, a theme this week. Just with everything going on and... Uh, what was I going to say? Everything going on from... from Bruh, where is this story? Hold tight, hold tight, hold tight. Um, while I look for this, because I feel like I'm, you know, just sitting here. This is where people get bored and leave. I will say once again, go check out that hideaway video. Because that joint is tight. And it's a cool video. And honestly, for, for, for most folks who care about ASOS Fables, we're all probably introverts as well. <laughs> so you might relate and like it. So yeah, check it out. Check it out. Um, wow. 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 I really, how are you telling stories with no bookmark? Listen, I have a bookmark. I have everything written out. The thing is, is I think I wrote the wrong thing. I think I wrote the wrong, uh, or I had dyslexia. And I wrote the wrong order of the numbers. So I'm sitting here and I'm like, bro, like, okay, okay, there it is. There it is. Oh, I wrote down the page number, but I didn't write down the story number. So everything is, 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 uh, everything is organized into, you know, numbers, of course, but I wrote down the page number and I didn't write down the actual story number. So that's where that came from. You know, I'm gonna read that story since I just went through all this. I'm gonna read it. I said, I would probably save it. But, you know, let's get into it. So this one's a little longer, but keep up. It's called The Eagle, The Jackdaw, and The Shepherd. And if you're not aware, because I wasn't aware because I was born in the 1990s, a jackdaw is a, it's pretty much like a type of crow. Um, it's pretty much a crow. It's, they call it the jack doll, but just think about it as the crow. The eagle, the crow, and the shepherd. Okay? All right, let's get into it. One day, a jack doll, crow, saw an eagle swoop down on a lamb and carry it off in his talons. Savage. My word, said the jack doll. I'll do that myself. So it flew high up into the air and then came shooting down with a great whirring of wings onto the back of a big ram. It had no sooner alighted than its claws got caught fast in the wool 
and nothing it could do was of any use. There it stuck, flapping away and only making things worse instead of better. By and by, up came the shepherd. Oh-ho, he said. So that's what you'd be doing, is it? And he took the jackdaw, clipped his wings, and carried it home to his children. It looked so odd that they didn't know what to make of it. What sort of bird is it, father? They asked. It's a jackdaw, he replied, and nothing but a jackdaw, but it wants to be taken for an eagle. Moral, if you attempt what is beyond your power, your trouble will be wasted and you court not only misfortune, but ridicule. Damn. Bars. <laughs> Bars. So let's get into it. This is pretty self-explanatory. The jackdaw, the crow. The eagle, listen, the, to make it simple, the eagle was out here doing him. The eagle was out here swooping these lambs, eating them, throwing them on the mountain, whatever eagles be doing. They be savages. Eagles just be savages and just be flying. The savage comes, takes his lamb, gets it out the way. The jackdaw, the crow is like, oh man, that's cool. I'm going to try to do that. And Cuz tried to get a ram. So, so okay. There's a lot. There's a lot to the story. I, I can tell right now. The crow tried to take, listen, it says, it flew high up into the air and then came shooting down with a great whirring of wings onto the back of a big ram. Mm -hmm. Now, the eagle swooped down on a lamb. Now, a lamb is, okay, before I get into the, 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 the intricacies, I'm going to go more into like the story. So Eagle's doing him. The crow's like, damn, I want to do him too. Uh, pause. And he said, I'm going to jump and try to grab me something and, and, and carry it away because I'm hungry. And, you know, he got caught up. Got caught up in the ram's wool. The shepherd came back around and said, hey, bro, like, what you doing here? And got him out of there. So then um, he clipped his wings. So no longer can he even fly. And his kid's like, what is that? He's like, oh, man, it's just it's just a fronting ass crow. <laughs> this crow is out here fronting like he an eagle. And I got him. So there's a lot. There is a lot in here. And as I think about it more, there, there's just so much. OK, so once again, the eagle, the eagle saw a lamb. And it carried it off in his talons. Right. A lamb. A lamb is not, you know what I'm saying? A lamb is not that big. It's relatively big, like compared to an eagle, per se, which goes to show the strength of an eagle. But it's not that big. Like, when you think about a ram, like a ram, like think about a ram, bro. Like, this is not, like, this is not a cat. This is not a dog. This is not even a gazelle. This is a ram. A ram is huge. So not only was the crow trying to be like the eagle, but the crow was trying to be, was, was doing way, way too much. Way, 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 way too much. It came down for a ram. Imagine if you had a farm and you had a ram and you look and you see a crow trying to come down to take this ram. How would you feel? Why is a crow trying to take a ram what do they say you got too much dip on your chip <laughs> way too much dip on the chip so there's a lot to this so the eagle is created to hunt animals and hunt things like this with its talons like it has talons it has you know those long legs it has the strength in the legs it has all that to be able to do these things like it was it was built for that it was built for that the crow however is more so, and maybe I'm thinking of vultures, but they're more so like scavengers, right? They're not really built to to carry things off with their talons that aren't like, you know, mouse size or rabbit size or anything that would actually make any sense for it to carry. So for a jackdaw to try to go for a ram, it's just foolishness. It's just foolish. It's foolish. An eagle knows its limit. It knows that, hey, I'm coming for this lamb because I know I can get this lamb out of here right the lamb is not heavy jeff what it do 
The lamb is not heavy though. The ram, like the ram, bruh, like the ram is huge. Why is a bird? Why is a human? Why is anything trying to pick up a ram? See, the crow not only was fronting and trying to be like, you know, trying to be like the eagle, but it didn't even know, it didn't even know the rules to the game that it was playing in. It, it didn't know the rules to the game. Because if it knew the rules to the game, not maybe it would have stayed out. But um Yeah, nah, like the, the eagle knows his limits. The crow is like, man, I want to do that. I'm trying to be like that. I'm trying, you know what I'm saying? I'm trying fresh, so clean, whatever. Nah, bruh, you can't do it like that. Now let's take it to humans. How many times have you seen someone doing them and thought that either you could do it better or you thought you could do what they do? You didn't realize what you got yourself into. You bit off more than you can chew. You pay more money than you can afford to pay. And now you end up in a position with your wings clipped, meaning you can't fly, meaning you can't do what you need to do to actually survive and to thrive and to have a life that is worth living because you were trying to be what somebody else was doing. You're trying to be what somebody else told you to be. You're trying to be, you know, you fronting. You ain't got a lot of kicking, my nigga. You know what I'm saying? It's really as simple as that, right? Like, It's really as simple as that. Um, how many times do you put yourself in a position? I know I have. I'm not. I'm not even gonna sit here and pretend like. I, 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 there's certainly been times I've gotten into things or looked into things and and bit off more than I could chew. The thing is, is I've I've been I've been in that situation enough to know how to deal with it. When I do, when I get to that point where you know my mouth is wide and you know there's you know, whatever. I'm I'm trying to bite, chew, whatever. And I'm just like, it's not going to work. It's not going to work. It's not going to work. You know? Um, and that's cool because sometimes, you know, some lessons are more expensive than others. Some people pay student loans to learn lessons. Some people, you know, pay off debt to learn lessons from dumb shit that they did. Um, so with that being said, I would say, you know, stick to your script. Stick to your path. Don't be out here trying to do what these other folks are doing. Like be inspired by it, you know, be inspired mm -hmm. by it, but don't let, but don't let FOMO fear of missing out, put you in a position to where you're literally missing out on, you know, just, just your life and your purpose and what you should be doing. You know, uh, I am an advocate for curiosity. I'm a bigger advocate for discernment. Well, it's about, I equally advocate for both. I won't say I'm a bigger, no, no, you know what? You know what? Because curiosity killed the cat. So discernment didn't kill the cat. Discernment would have told the cat to get the hell out of there, but the curiosity killed the cat, right? So you know what? Like I'm all about being curious. I know all the art, artistic people say, oh, stay curious, stay, you know, stay uh, learning. And you should, I'm, 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 I'm slightly mocking them and I feel bad and I'm sorry if this ever comes back, but be just have discernment have discernment like if you're into i don't know if you i don't know i can't tell i can't tell no okay you know what i'm gonna take it away from an interest perspective not that you can't be interested in things or you can't you know think about things you know or look into things because you can be in the shoes and also be in the tech you can be in the tech, but also be into uh, how water bottles are made. You can be into how water bottles are made and still be into anime. And you can be into anime and you can be into, you know, you can be into a lot of things. Um, however, uh, what you actually do is a different thing. What you actually do is different. You know, you can't, not to say you can't, but don't be a crow trying to pick up a ram. Like that's, that's just OC. And the more I think about it, the more OC it is. Like, bro, you don't even know the rules to this. It's like, you know, I, I I've been I've been studying uh like into real estate a bit and just looking into like what that is and how it goes and just what the process and different processes are. That's something I was doing during the pandemic. But one thing about it is that there are a lot of newer investors that are kind of getting themselves into situations or getting themselves into deals that they have no idea what it's about. And once again, not to say you, you can't try and, and learn because sometimes from you getting burnt, you figure you learn 
more, you learn faster, you learn why, okay, this is why I shouldn't do that. But, you know, a common thing that I've heard from more seasoned investors is that um, there are people who get into it with no experience, with no understanding of how the rules really work. They watch a couple of YouTube videos and get out on wholesaling or doing whatever, and they end up in a situation where all of a sudden, like, you got to pass this contract off, you know, it's supposed to happen in a, you know, in a couple minutes or within a couple hours. But, you know, nobody's responding because you didn't take the time to get your list together to get to find a buyer. Now you're sitting here with a hundred thousand, two hundred thousand, three hundred thousand dollar debt on your hands. And you have no one to take it off your hands because you didn't understand the game. You missed one step. You bit off more than you can chew. You buying a three hundred thousand, five hundred thousand dollar property and you don't even know the process of flipping yet or the process of uh, buying hold or what have you. I'm not going to get too into that, but you get the drift like. Uh, I'll bring it like, okay. It, it, it's like, 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 like I play, I play smash. I love super smash brothers. If you try to fight me with Ness and you never played Ness, I will bust your ass. It, it, you, you are a crow. You are a crow to an eagle. You will die. Okay. It's not a joke. It's not a game. Right. And you know, even, even with, uh, uh, with music, you know, some people, oh, I can try to do music, I can do this, but once you get into it and you realize, oh, this is what's going on, oh, damn, this is what you got to do, okay, this is cool, but, oh, what is this, what is that? Like, you're figuring out things that you didn't know anything about because you didn't do your research. I think it's important to always do your research. That's part of being discerning, doing your research, having the humility and the sense to just step back and say, okay. Let me do my research on this. Let me figure this out. Not to the point of researching because of paralysis by analysis, but more so to try to understand what you're about to jump into, if you want to jump into it. If the crow realized, hey, maybe I am five pounds at most, so I shouldn't be trying to lift up a big ram. Maybe I should watch the eagle a little bit more. Maybe I can talk to the eagle and say, hey, eagle, you know, how'd you do that right there? He goes like, hey, man, I was born like this. I was born to be able to to pick stuff up and, and do it like this. I can I can hold up to 20 times my weight. So I'm 15 pounds, so I can hold up to, you know, or I'm 6 pounds. I can hold up to 120 pounds. So I always try to find a lamb that's like this or find a lamb that's like that. You know, sometimes lambs have too much wool, but, you know, you can see by uh, their legs if they're big or not. So you have to judge by the legs. Like the eagle would have been putting them on the game and said, hey, and also would say, okay, well, Crow, you want to do that. Uh, I'm not sure if you can do that. Like, you know, have you, how about uh, a bird? How about, not a bird, how about a mouse? Mm -hmm. Kenny, what it do? How about, you know, how about try a mouse? How about try a cat? How about try something smaller before we get into a lamb or a ram, you know? So there's a lot to it. There's, there's a lot to it. Like the crow did not seek advice, right? The jackdaw did not seek advice, did not try to find any game to, to, to understand what he's trying to do a little bit better. He just went into it and said, fuck it. I saw him do it. I'm going to just do it like that. You know, um, so they're, they're, they're damn, they're, this, this story is deep, man. There's a lot. There's a lot here. It's like... <laughs> And, and think about it. It, it, it. When it got caught, when the when the crow, when the jackdaw, so what it do? When the crow got caught, it's like, damn, bro. Like, you really are sitting here. You're trying to pick up a ram. You are a three pound bird trying to pick up a ram. And not only did you pick, try to pick up a ram, you got stuck in the ram, looking stupid. You flapping your wings, looking like an idiot, trying to fly off. You trying to copy the eagle, and you just look dumb. Like, ultimately, there's a lot to this story. And honestly, I'm not even going to go back to the other story I was going to read. But this is the story I was trying to find. And I'm glad I found it because there's so much in this. Like, listen, do you like y'all know I'm an advocate for being yourself. Be yourself because you're going to be out here looking stupid, trying to copy what someone else is doing. And that other person that's knowing what they're doing has been doing it already. They built up the strength in their legs. They built up the strength in their talents to be able to pick up lambs. They understand, like, I guess the market. They understand their strengths. They understand their weaknesses. They understand what they can and they can't do. Meanwhile, you, you're just green and you're just like, oh, well, I'm just going to go and I'm just going to check it out. I'm going to try it out. I'm just going to be, you know, I'm going to fall, fail, fail faster, as they say. 
uh, that's cool. I'm all with the fail faster movement, but part of the fail faster movement is knowing it is less about going to fail faster, but it's more so understanding the process of getting ready to execute. And sometimes the execution requires research. Sometimes it requires development. Sometimes it requires, sometimes your research and development is going out to fail faster. But a lot of it is also like knowing your lane and knowing what you're doing. Like when you fail faster, quote unquote, you're learning more faster. You're learning what you can do, what you can't do, what works, what doesn't work, what have you. You're learning all these things in, 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 in seconds, right? Or minutes or months, whatever. So it's it's not about, oh, I'm just going to go out here and fail. I'm just going to go out here and do this. It's about not being afraid to fail. But the crow should have been a little bit more afraid to fail. Because had he been a little more afraid to fail, he wouldn't have been looking stupid. And now he can't even fly anymore. Now he can't even... The crow can't even be himself anymore because he was trying to be somebody else. You tried to be like the eagle. You failed. You failed bad. Your wings got clipped. You can't even fly no more. You're just out here looking stupid, bro. You're looking stupid. And now you're on the ground. And you have to sit there at the ground and think, damn. I remember I used to fly these skies. I used to go in the trees. I used to eat bugs. I used to do all kinds of crazy stuff. So that one day I saw that eagle and I thought I could do him. Don't be the jackdaw. Don't be the crow. Do you out there, y'all. Do you out there. Seriously. Man, that's a good story. There's a lot to that story. That that That's good, man. That is a good-ass story. Like, I feel, I feel weird because I've just been uh, going in on it, but... That is a good story. Um, and honestly, with that, I'm going to go ahead and wrap this up. Uh, I think y'all get it. Let's let's go back over everything. Let's do a quick review. You know, uh, quick review. The stag with one eye. Remember, <laughs> you never know where danger is coming from. Keep a look at everything and everyone, including yourself. Don't ever think that where you think danger is coming from is where it's going to come from. If you're going to be on point, be all the way on point. You understand? Um, the farmer and the viper. Kindness is thrown away upon the evil. Have discernment when trying to help people. Do not let your compassion get you clapped. <laughs> okay? That's the most succinct way I can put it. Do not let your compassion get you in a position where you are in harm, you are in more harm's way than if you were just a dick. I'm not saying go be a dick, go be an asshole to everybody. What I'm saying is protect yourself because nobody else will. Okay, and don't be sitting out here thinking, oh, well, I'm being compassionate, oh, I'm being kind. Like, bro, you're food, you're food to a lot of people. Understand? Like, you're food. Understand? Okay, as a person who has who has been chewed up before. For being too nice, understand you are somebody's food when you when you do that. Be discernment. Be discerning. Have some sense. Think. Okay. Once again, do not think back to the danger. Don't think that it's coming from sometimes you are the problem. Maybe you are the problem. You, you over here being nice and doing this. Oh man, the world is so man, why does the world keep doing me like this? Because you keep doing it. You ain't learn. Idiot. Damn. And last but not least, the eagle, the jackdaw, and the shepherd. Continue to be yourself. Don't be like somebody else because of FOMO because you will miss out. <laughs> you will miss out on maybe your purpose and what you need to be here for, what you need to be flying around for, okay? So I'm going to end it on that. Um, I'm going to say once again, thanks to everybody that tuned in. Um, I hope you guys got something from this. Uh, once again, go check out you know the new song, Hideaway. On my, uh, oh, I stayed up late playing Super Smash last night, so I'm a little tired. So excuse me. Somebody was playing with Joe Biden last night on Super Smash Brothers. It was hilarious. Anyway, <laughs> um, uh, but yeah, continue to be yourself. Don't try to be like somebody else because of FOMO, because you will miss out on your purpose. Okay, and that's a <laughs> message for me as well. But you know, I hope everyone got something from it. I hope everyone's staying safe. Hope everyone's staying warm. Hope everyone's jamming that new single, you know what I'm saying? Jamming that uh jails. What it do? Um, 
but yeah, I hope everyone's having a good day. I hope everyone has a good day. I hope this, uh, I hope this, uh, you know, I hope this helped out. And if you watch it later, you know, in eight weeks from now, or whatever, I hope, I hope this helps you then too. Okay. Um, I'm getting this together and making it a little better, you know, and, uh, once again, let me know in the comments if there is anything you'd like to see, any stories you'd like me to break down. Um, if you want to jump on and you want to read a fable or you want to jump in and explain a fable a bit and we can collaborate behind the scenes or something like that to make something cool, please, let's do it. I'm open for it. You know, once again, I do this every Friday at nine, so don't come over here with no elongated like i keep i like to keep it simple because i get headaches and i get i don't want to say overwhelmed easily but i get frustrated really easy because people be doing too much so please don't do too much um yeah i mean that's that's really it y'all like i don't really have much else to say i'm about to get started with my day i got bars yeah because i am cj a -A, a and i get up on my way a uh i'll see you run right away a uh it's 9.58, hey, uh, yeah. Okay, anyway, I'm done. Good night. No, good morning. No, good day, everyone. Be safe, much love, and be discerning. Be wise. Dang, you, of course, you, you came in right as I was leaving. <laughs> you came in right as I was leaving. But watch it back. There's a lot of gems in there. There's a lot of gems. Check it out, but... Y'all be safe. I'm out of here. Peace. Oh, wait. Damn.